Our scripture reading is from uh, the 10th chapter of Acts. It's not going to be probably immediately apparent to you uh, what this is about. It's a little bit confusing. But have you ever had a dream that didn't make sense to you? Okay. All the time, right? <laughs> what, is it, what does it mean? So this is a dream that um, may not make sense to us, a vision that Peter had. But it was shocking enough and life-changing enough that it changed not only his course, his path, it changed the whole direction of the early Christian church from this vision. About noon the next day, and since uh, Luke wrote Acts, that's really important. Noon is when Jesus took his last breath. About noon the next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray, because where else can you get a moment's peace? Go on the roof. He became hungry, and he wanted something to eat. And while it was being prepared for him, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down, being lowered to the ground by its four corners. And in it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Let's page the Audubon Society. <laughs> and then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I've never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again a second time, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. That's significant. And suddenly the whole sheet was taken up to heaven. Is this a weird dream or what? So as we all uh, consider what this text means, not only in its own context, but for us today, shall we pray to hear a good word from my words and, of course, from the reflections of your own hearts and your own spirits. Let's pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all of our hearts, may they give you joy, O oh God. You who strengthen us day by day, and you who lead us day by day into new and abundant life, as you wish for this whole world. Amen. Well, sometimes reading scripture is like entering a room where the conversation is already in full swing, right? People are talking passionately. Does this ever happen to you? But you have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> you just know that they're really passionate about what they're saying. And so it is with this text, with Acts 10, um, that I just dropped on you from out of nowhere. <laughs> it's actually in the lectionary we'll follow, but let me just say, surprise! <laughs> Surprise! Actually, I need this. Surprise! <laughs> I think this thing has gotten more use today than my friend's kids used it ever. Anyway, we'll use that. It can also, this text can also feel like this. I had a, a college roommate who used to have these very elaborate, detailed dreams that she would tell me about almost probably you know, a few minutes after she had them. And after describing these elaborate dreams, she would say to me, well, what do you make of that? What do you think that was about? <laughs> and I would say, what do you think I said? I don't know. <laughs> why are you asking me to interpret your dream, right? So you may not know why this vision matters and why it's described in Acts, but I promise you, I think it does. I just think it's like we've entered a room where we don't know what's going on. So let me see if I can help us here. Let me take you by the hand and get you some appetizers and help you jump into this conversation, okay? So first, let me orient you to time. The resurrection has happened. The Holy Spirit has descended like a dove on Jesus' apostles. And here we are in the beginning stages of the Jesus movement. There's no church. 
that doesn't happen for you know a long time there's no church it's just a jesus movement now like all religious movements in their infancy people are on fire and that also means that they're also disagreeing does that make sense to you <laughs> they're already fighting yeah does this say church or what it's a church right but it's true right so the major disagreement of the early church as it's described in acts involved this very fundamental question right this very fundamental question was is the good news of jesus resurrection just for the religious insiders i.e the jewish people or is it for everybody including those gentiles everyone say those gentiles <laughs> which as you know is pretty much everyone here um, depending on your your background so that's the context for the conversation that we're walking into the prelude to Peter's vision of all these baffling animals that are, are arranged on this sheet. You have to know that dietary restrictions, dietary restrictions were the cornerstone of how the Jewish people maintained their identity and their faith as an occupied people in the first century. So it'd be like if someone came in here and said, you can never drink coffee at Coffee Fellowship again. <laughs> You'd be like, what now? <laughs> what do you say? It would be like saying, you never get to celebrate communion again. What now? What are you saying? This is not a small issue. But Peter has such a clear vision. And not only that, he hears God's voice telling him to get up and eat animals that his faith has declared verboten. Right? This isn't only a vegetarian's nightmare, right? This is a religious conversion. This is a religious conversion. But in fact, eating different animals than you're used to isn't the point. The point is that Peter's being asked by God for the sake of everything that Jesus was and is to specifically set aside something in his religious tradition that separated him from everybody else, right? Some of Peter's contemporaries wanted non-Jewish converts to eat kosher. So the idea, again, is like, if you want to join us, you've got to play by our rules, right? That's the fight that they were having. But Peter has this horrifying dream, this horrifying vision, where God makes it clear that that's not necessary. Things by themselves are not clean or unclean. Does that make sense to you? Things by themselves are not clean and unclean. Isn't everything that God makes good? Can I hear an amen? Amen, amen right? It's God's presence that really matters. So what do you think about that as you eat your sausage and cheese crackers? Is this what you thought we were talking about when you entered the room? I'm thinking that I missed the opportunity to name my sermon Pigs on a Blanket. <laughs> it was too late, anyway. There's always next year or four years, whenever this comes around again. <laughs> okay, well, what is this about? What is this about? I think sometimes we have this idea that religion and faith are about continuity and tradition which they are, in part. The larger story, though, is more messy and complete. The larger story is that God is full of surprises. That's the larger story. That as soon as we have God tucked into a safe little box, and we've got her right where we want her, right? Suddenly, you push a button, and out she comes. Surprise. Surprise. I'm getting back into the swing of things this week after being home for the wedding, which was great, by the way. It was really wonderful. I'm glad I, I'm glad I did, and I'm glad it's over, if that makes sense to you. Yeah. <laughs> Weddings are often like that. Oh, God doesn't want to, God doesn't want to go back in the box. <laughs> That's great. That's perfect. Thank you, God. <laughs> So I'm, I'm catching up on emails this past week and getting back into the swing of things. And 
I had, um, I don't want to call it a pleasure, but I had the opportunity to review the decision that the Judicial Council of the United Methodist Church made in reference to the vote that they took a couple months ago. And all of that stuff is available online. If you're like a church nerd, go for it. It's really, but there's a lot of nitty gritty kind of church legalese in it. But the take home for me as I reviewed all those things was this, and it saddens me to say this, that there are enough people currently in the United Methodist Church that want to stuff God back into our box. Amen. I think they want to ignore, and of course we all know that denial and ignoring really works well for life, challenge, for life challenges, right? They want to ignore these issues. They want to ignore and minimize and shame LGBTQ people just for being who they are. And they want to deny that God has her arms open and wide open. Amen. And they claim to take scripture seriously, which, if it didn't make me cry, would make me laugh. And I am, I'm not sure if this congregation can stay in the same room with this version of the United Methodist Church and continue pretending that we're having the same conversation. If there is an inclusive Methodist denomination that results from this holy mess, and it's looking likely there will be, I'm wondering if we want to prayerfully consider joining whatever that might be. And I'm suggesting to us that our discernment about that begins now. So I ask you whether God has ever surprised you. And sometimes the surprises aren't pleasant. <laughs> we didn't go into that in the children's time. But sometimes you get a diagnosis, or a relationship ends, or there's one crisis or another, and you don't want to see that sock come out of its box, right? But sometimes God surprises you, and there are gifts and graces. And you know what? I feel that way about the last six months. I really do. And I think back to my own life, because there was a surprise that happened to me once, and I know it's from God because it takes me to a deeper and a newer place, right? My biggest vision, like Peter's, happened when I was in college, and I was flunking out of being an evangelical. Flunking out. I just had too many questions that they couldn't or wouldn't answer. It's fine. Surprise. Surprise, yeah, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> That's absolutely right. <laughs> I was that annoying confirmation student, like, and I, I love these students, but I was that student who was like, well, I don't think that's true. <laughs> so anyway, the writing was on the wall, as they say. I hadn't yet found the United Church of Christ. I really thought I was in a spiritual no man's land. And then I had a vision in a church of all places. What a place to have a vision. And I saw myself as almost in a blinding light. It was very bi biblical. I saw myself as a pastor and a preacher and a spiritual leader. And I was stunned. Me? Me? I remember walking back to my friend's dorm in a haze. How could this be? I don't even have a place to lay my head spiritually. There's no sheet. There's no sheet for me to rest on. But all I heard from God was, surprise. surprise. My friends, God has something good in store for all of us, no matter what, no matter what. If you believe this, if you want to believe this, I ask that you say with me, amen. Amen. Yeah.